Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're starting a new set of playlists on heat transfer. And of course, heat can be transferred in three different ways. It can be transferred through conduction, through radiation, and through convection. So I thought making three separate playlists would be pretty good. Starting with the playlist on heat conduction, here we have two pieces of metal, one made out of copper, one made out of steel, end to end, between two heat sinks, one at 100 degrees centigrade and one at zero degrees centigrade. So we're going to have heat traveling from the hot to the cold reservoir. And notice that at the junction between the two metals, between copper and steel, the temperature is 60 degrees centigrade. If the length of the copper section is 100 centimeters, and we know that the cross-sectional area is five centimeters squared, what is the length of the steel section and how much heat will be transferring from the hot to the cold? What will be the amount of heat flow per unit time? And here are the coefficients of conduction for copper and steel, because we're going to need those. So how do we solve a problem like that? Well, the key to understanding and solving the problem is realizing that the amount of heat flowing through the copper section is exactly the same as the amount of heat flowing through the steel section. It's kind of like the same with water flowing through a hose. It doesn't matter what the diameter of the hose is. The amount of water flowing through the hose must be a constant. The amount of heat flowing through these two metals must be a constant. Notice we can write dq dt like this, or we can write it with a dot on top because that's the meaning of q dot. It means dq dt. So we can say that the q dot through the copper is equal to the q dot through the steel. And of course, now we need an equation associated with that. The equation is that K times the cross section area times the difference in the temperature for copper must be the same as K. Ooh, and divide, I'm missing one part of the equation, divided by the length through that section is equal to the K times the cross section area times the change in the temperature for steel divided by, of course, the length of steel and the length of copper. So I'll just go ahead and write it like that. So that's how we can then equate the two, equation, the, uh, the two sides of the equation uh, to each other. Now notice that the cross-section area will be the same for both, so those cancel out. We can divide both sides by A. And we know what the delta temperature is for the copper. We don't know what this is, so this is what we're looking for. This is the question we're looking for, so we're going to solve that for the length of the steel. So the length of the steel equals the length of the copper times the ratio of K times delta T for the steel divided by K times delta T for the copper. So what I've done here is I've rearranged the equation so I can solve for the length of the steel in terms of length of the copper. All right, let's go ahead and solve the equation then. So the length of the steel is equal to 100 centimeters times K for the steel, which is equal to 0 0.12, 0 0.12. And notice that the units will cancel out, so we can leave the units out. The delta T for steel will be the difference between 60 and 0. So that would be 60 divided by the K for copper, which is 0 0.92, because copper conducts heat a lot better than steel. And let's see here, the difference them two would be from 100 to 60, which is 40. And so the length of the steel is in terms of centimeters. We have 0.12 times 60 divided by 0.92 and divided by 40 and multiply it times 100, and we get 19.56. So L equals 19.6 centimeters, which is the length of the steel section. Now we need to figure out the amount of energy, the amount of heat flow that flows through the system, through the, the copper and the steel pipe. So we can say Q dot, and we can pick either one of them, is equal to K, times A times delta T divided by the length, and let's take the copper portion. So in this case, the K for copper is 0 
times the cross-sectional area, which would be 5 square centimeters, times delta T for copper, which would be 40, all divided by the length, which is 100. Now notice, Q will be in terms of calories per second. The centimeters and centigrade degrees cancels out with the centimeter squared and the delta T in centigrade degrees. So we're left with uh, Q dot will be in calories per second. All right. So we have 0.92 times 5 times 40 divided by 100. And that gives us, uh, let's see here, 184. Let's, wow, I can't see the dot if that is a dot. 1.84 calories per second. And that will be the amount of heat flowing through the copper and the steel section from the 100 degrees reservoir to the zero degree reservoir. And that is how it's done.